What's going on everybody? We have finally arrived. I probably shouldn't do that, but it's okay because I'm excited. We're on part four now of our series on how to case mod your original Xbox console. As you can see here, I have a console I've already taken the top off. If you did the first part of this, um, you would have already had this taken off anyways. So I am going to show you from start to finish how to put everything together. Um, so, this was from part one. It's your custom case. This one's kind of got dirty. It's actually been sitting there for a little while. So, obviously I would clean this up before I sent it to a customer or cleaned it up before I put it on here. But for the purpose of our tutorial, it's not a big deal. Um, and I'm just to show you, yeah, it's got all four windows with the plexiglass already. Then, our next piece um, is actually a piece that we did not go over in this tutorial. Um, I used to show people how to make LED kits, and that was great, but there's a lot of tricky stuff with them, and it's very confusing, and I got a lot of feedback from viewers and customers that it was just a little bit too much. So what I've decided to do is I've started to make LED kits. Um, this kit is plug and play. I've already got everything installed. Um, it feeds off of the DVD drive cable, just like this. And yes, I do sell these to customers. I've had just so many people ask to start doing this because it was just a little bit too complicated. Um, the cool part about this LED kit is it's a lot more versatile than any other LED kit you can find. I know um, there was one company that made this LED kit and it was really, it was like a little circle and it had four little measly LED lights and you would mount it right on the um, the center part here which I've always called a cat but have been told it's called many other things um, and that's kinda lame I mean you, you spend all the time making this custom case you know you spend all this time customizing everything and probably doing I'm assuming a lot of you want to do some soft mods and stuff like that I mean don't do that you know I mean I know that obviously I'm I'm selling these to you guys and everything but don't waste your time with those little circle kits don't waste your time with the kits that are just one long strip of LEDs they're not versatile um, they're just not as good and I'll tell you why these LED kits I've set up I basically maxed out the the power uh, that you should use um, and still give yourself enough leeway for any of the custom hardware and custom hard drives you have. Um, there's actually four sections of LED lights as you can see here. Um, and there's a total of 12 LED lights which is going to be much much brighter, much more obvious. Uh, it's really it's going to be hard to mistake your console whenever you power it on. So if you're interested in one of these um, definitely check the description below. Um, they're not really all that expensive either. I, I, I don't try to make a whole ton of money off of them. Um, really I just like to be able to help the modding community have some supplies and stuff especially for a console that nobody really does stuff for anymore. So there's that enough of my blabbering on about that and then of course from our last step step three uh, the custom power button um, and all of these by the way the LED kit I just showed you in this all have blue LEDs um, if you watch the third part you know I did not put two colors I only put a main color really isn't important to me um, if there's an error with your console it's going to be pretty obvious you really don't have to have those and so it's just kind of a waste of time and putting the two different LED colors is a little bit more of a hassle. Um, it's actually a lot more of a hassle. Um, so anyways, there's that. So what we're going to do is, all this is super simple, and I'm not actually going to be custom building this one, um, but I am going to show you everything you need to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to take some of this extra stuff out right now. I've already taken the screw out right here that's for the hard drive. The main thing we really need to do is we need to get in here a little bit easier on the faceplate. Um, that's going to be the first thing we do so that we can install the custom power button. So you really, if you're careful, don't rip and tug at it, obviously. But you can set that aside and just move it out of the way. And you should be pretty good. 
I've already unplugged this power one. Um, so really what we need to do now is remove the faceplate. Um, on each side of the faceplate, you'll see these two little pieces. Let me see if I can get a better shot. There's a piece right here and that's not part of the faceplate. On each side, if you push that in while kind of prying out on the faceplate a little bit, it should pop out that side. Now, you, you can't hurt yourself because there's some sharp edges on this stuff, so keep some band-aids ready. Of course, this one wants to be difficult. There we go. So yeah, that yeah, clicked back in place, didn't it? Okay. So since this one wants to click back, I'm going to kind of hold that. There we go. Oh, and then the other side just popped out right away. Isn't that convenient? All right, and then we're going to carefully feed this. Now, obviously, if you're doing this to your own console, you've already taken this off. Um, so this part would actually be moot. But I wanted to, you know, the whole point of this is to show assembly. So we're just going to pry that out. And if you don't know how, you push that little button right there while pulling it out from the bottom and you kind of pull it out that way. All right, so we're going to put our new one in here. Um, a good way to do it is hold it in front of you the same way you look at the console while it's put together and then that way you can make sure you put it in there the right way because see all the words on there face the same way. So you just want to conveniently kind of carefully place it into the top first as I didn't do just a second ago and then just slide it in there like that. All right, should be good. If you use five millimeter LEDs, you'll see it's flexing just a little bit, but that's okay. It's not a huge deal. There is some leeway. And then we're just going to slide that back in. Pop all that back in just like that. And then of course you'll plug it in. Not too hard. They've got little slots on the connector, so you can only put it in there one way. All right, so there's that part. All right, now we're going to take these fancy LED kits and put it in. So for this, um, let's see, get this turned back around. Still going to keep that out of the way. We're going to go ahead and disconnect the disk drive, though. So we're just going to pull. We're going to go ahead and pull the uh, IDE cable out, and then we can go ahead and take the screws out. For the disk drive, there's one on each side. That way we can go ahead and kind of pull it out. That Because we, what we really want is to get back here. I can't really get a good view on it because it's still connected, but we're pulling out the, uh, the old DVD drive cable. And if you bought the kit, you'll... Um, you're also going to remove the whole thing. So we're going to have to pop that whole thing out. Now, the DVD cables I use are OEM, which means original manufacturing. Um, so it should work the way it is where you plug in one side and the other side is still kind of in the right position. Um, so we'll plug in this side. A good rule of thumb is with these kits is that the side that's bigger, if you look real close, this side has two empty holes right there. That side is the side that gets plugged into the motherboard. And then the one that's a little bit smaller is the one that gets plugged into the disk drive. So we're just going to kind of take this and feed it out of the way so we have room to put our disk drive back in. And then we're just going to plug it all back up. Starting with this, of course. Well, my lighting is kind of bad. Can't really see anything. There we go. I'm going to plug the IDE cable back in. And we're just going to set it right back down in there. Go ahead and put these screws back in for the disk drive. Now, the LED kit is also versatile because each one of these LED areas 
has this little backing on it that you just peel off. So you can either A, attach it to the underside of the case, or you can attach it to the walls. Now that's less practical in the original Xbox because obviously there's not as much room. There is some here in the back, that'd be a good place to start. And that's probably exactly what I'm going to do. Um, but if you get to it, you can att actually attach them to the underside of the case because they're very, as you can see, very thin, very low profile. Um, because of the fact that you took out the, the metal shielding, you have a lot of extra play in there, so it's real easy to install those LED lights there if you want to. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this hard drive back in place. Feed the wires back through. That's also why I didn't disconnect these because it just saves you an extra little bit of time there. There we go. And then these, of course, popped back out. <laughs> okay, so. As I said with these, you can attach them anywhere. Um, for instance, you can peel the backer off and start right here and then move around. Hell, you can even attach them to somewhere in here. Um, even attach them right to the top of the hard drive if that's what you really want and the top of the disk drive. It's not going to bother it. Um, like I said, there's going to be plenty of clearance. Now, this is the part I'm not going to do. I'm not going to actually attach these because this is not going to be used for a custom console. Um, but all you really have to do is, um, I use shrink on each of them, so you're not going to be able to peel it away on the outside. So you may kind of have to pick at these a little bit. Um, that's just the way I want to design them. It's a lot stronger that way. So I'm sorry if it's a little bit harder to get that backer off, but trust me, the strength of these is a lot better that way. Alright, so, you could even do it the way I'm going to do it just to show you how to do it, although I wouldn't recommend it, because that would be silly not to attach them, but I'm going to basically just set them in here, just like this. And we're going to then attach the case. Alright, so all you can do with the case is, obviously this is probably real simple, I mean it just pops right back on there. Um, I see this is why I had a feeling it would be hard because the cable's going to move around on me. And it's going to get in the way. There we go. See? Just like that. And then let me go ahead and flip it and all we're going to do is we're going to put... I'm going to put a couple, I'm going to put the four main case screws back in. Now luckily with the design I taught you, whether you bought one of these custom cases from me or you went ahead and made one yourself, all of the case screws still work just fine. Um, I know that working with the Xbox 360, usually when you do a case mod, um, you end up losing a couple of the case screws because you cut them out essentially. Uh, but that's not the case with these. Alright, so let's go ahead and screw them in. Oh, wrong way. Now again, obviously I know that I didn't attach the LED kit, so when I power this on, um, it's probably not going to look as good as when you do attach them, but I didn't want to peel that backer off knowing that this was a console that isn't going to be custom built and then I'd essentially just be wasting the whole LED kit so bear with me if it doesn't look quite the same as it probably will on yours alright, just getting all these screws, hopefully these aren't all off camera, there's a few that are off camera but so all I'm doing is just screwing this back in. Alright, so as you can see, even... Oh, I didn't tighten a couple of them all the way. Hold on. Okay. Alright, so as you can see, even with the LED lights not 
officially attached and they're kind of all over the place. You can see the wire. I mean, obviously when you mount it, you would probably put the wire and run it down through here so it's not as visible. Uh, or maybe you would, you know, whatever you want to do. That's the cool thing is that these are really versatile. So that's it. I mean, we're pretty much done. Let me get my power cable and uh, AV cable. And then uh, we'll test everything out. And obviously I'm just plugging in the AV cable because I didn't put in error code lights on the front as we already talked about. Alright, so, ta-da! As you can see, this LED is actually wedged back in there, so it's not even lighting this section up. Um, and this one is kind of way off to the side, so obviously when you do it, you'll do a much better job than this. But I just wanted to kind of show you what it's like. And then of course the front, there's our custom blue power button. Um, you know, of course we'll want to um, just check everything out, make sure it rests pretty well. Um, and this does, even though, again, it's not attached. So, that's everything. Um, now, in this video, I know you guys may have just found this video randomly, whatever the case is. Um, but this is, is a four-part series, and pretty much everything I show you, I also make a kit. And if you buy all the kit forms, essentially, you could just watch this part, part four, and just install everything, and be done with it. Um... I know a lot of you probably do the software-related stuff and are probably really good at it um, and aren't as good at this stuff, and that's why you might do it, which is why I offer it to you guys. So check the description. I'm going to have a link to where you can get the custom case, just the top piece like this, so you, can, you don't have to disassemble the whole console. Uh, the LED kit, as well as the pre-made power button. Um, essentially so you can just, you know, buy the whole thing and set it up and be done. Um, I'll tell you what, right before I go, let's turn the light off. I, I just want to see how it looks actually, being that there's this LED kit which is completely wedged in there, and this one too. Just to give you an idea that it's still pretty bright even though I didn't do a thorough job. Yeah, as you can see, the LED light is like wedged in here. Um, so you can't see that one very much, and same thing with this one, it, it's a little bit back in there so you can't see it, but the ones I did keep in the right place while I attached um, look really good. So as um, you can see, this is a really good LED kit, nice and bright. Um, really cool that I'm offering the power buttons now too. So anyways, that's all for this, not only this video, but the whole series. Um, definitely... Give me a like and subscribe. Uh, definitely tell me what you guys think. And I appreciate all my viewers and all my loyal subscribers. It's been fun. And uh, if you have a question, I'll try to get back with you as soon as I can. Alright guys, until next time.